Are you a spender or a saver money personality? Here's how to balance your type. So in today's live broadcast, we chatted about spender and saver money types and some of the pitfalls of both types and how to balance your type to work with the type that you are. So the number one point is that we need to accept the type that we are more dominant in, whether or not we wish we were another type. I kept trying to squeeze my spender personality self into really disciplined saver type habits, and I kept having a lot of kickback. It wastes a lot of time and causes a lot of frustrated emotions. So if you are a certain type, just accept your type. Realize that, you know what? This is how this is right now in my life and my personality. I'm gonna work with myself in order to achieve good results. And with either type, we can achieve whatever results we like. So let's get started on how to balance out saver type and spender type. So if we are, well, let's start with the spender type because we did that in the video. So if we are the spender type, what we might benefit from doing because we sometimes can avoid tracking our money, keeping an eye on our money or watching our money is we want to make things easy for ourselves and we want to just start by expense tracking. So spender types can balance their type by expense tracking. We also want to keep an eye on how we're investing. Are we taking on loads of risk because we're comfortable with that? Or do we have balance in our investing portfolios as well? We wanna make sure that we know our type and we work with ourselves to counterbalance our comfort levels. If we're very comfortable spending or investing, but we don't have really stable savings or we don't have really stable basic portfolio parts, then we might wanna look into that and consider whether we want to apply more balance and stability so that we can do our risky things and also have stability. So back to the expense tracking, if we are a spender who has not started budgeting or doing any of that stuff and feels like it's too restrictive, what we wanna do is start expense tracking. Today, expense track, tally the amount. Tomorrow, expense track, all your spending, tally the amount and the total of the two days running tally and just keep going like that. On paper, notes, wherever you like. I use an app called iExpenseit that's free on the App Store. But what we wanna do is just start tracking our spending. It will feel empowering to be doing that because if we avoid really keeping an eye on our money, then we may find that part empowering to do because we are taking an action to look after our money. And that in itself will be empowering to our brain. So we can track our spending and we can also see over time where selective spending starts to kick in, where we see the numbers and we'll say, oh, I actually don't really feel like spending that much in that area. And then we can naturally start to correct once we see the numbers in front of us. So spender types who don't wanna use a budget may actually benefit from these no budget budget. It's an actual type of budget where you just apply your savings, your necessities, and then spend the rest. That's it. And a lot of people who don't want to track all the niggledy biggledy bits of their budget, they do it like that because you're still saving, your still necessities are covered, and then you can spend as you like without having to worry about it. Now, if you are an overspender, you might want to do the expense tracking part as well. And if you are really avoidant of your money with emotions, you might want to do the expense tracking part. <clears throat> Sorry, because. <clears throat> If you don't do the expense tracking part, then you will continue just feeling those feelings and those avoidance about money. So by starting to just expense track, it's the easiest and simplest way to start addressing our money in a way that doesn't feel confrontational or weird. It will just show us where our money's going. We don't apply any judgment to any of the purchases or any of this crazy mind chatter. We just leave it, track the numbers, track the numbers, that's it, that's all. So if we are a spender type, we would possibly want to consider balancing our type by expense tracking, by looking at our investing and looking at our other areas in our life, like our savings, and seeing where we can apply more stability. So spenders may benefit from applying more stability. Saver types who hoard money or are a bit nervous about counting every penny when they're out 
might benefit from educating themselves in areas that they are not as comfortable with but curious about, for example, NFTs or this whole metaverse or whatever it may be. So if we're that person and we're like, oh gosh, I'm a bit nervous about that area, we can read blogs about it, we can expose ourselves to conversations about it, we can join groups that are having these conversations on investing. Even if we don't know what's going on, the exposure will make our brain more familiar with it and the familiarity will help us become more comfortable. And then we can choose how to move forward from there once we're feeling a little more comfort in an area. So we may feel like, oh my gosh, you know, like I know nothing about like, you know, the metaverse and, and NFTs and all this stuff, but I have been following this for a little while. I read an article where this guy from uh, Dragon's Den said, oh, I think it was a Business Insider article, said, oh, the metaverse is kind of like, it's just technology. So it's just the new technology. So kind of like we were all at one point in history, not on the internet. And then we all kind of like, went on the internet we don't really think about it anymore that we just kind of went on the internet but the metaverse is just like the next internet internet that we're just going to kind of go onto if that makes sense so when i read that article because of all the little tiny bits of information and research and stuff i was like oh wow that makes total sense and it's not intimidating at all but i had to do the exposure to myself and to my brain in order to see that it made total sense based on all the information that i have and then suddenly framing it like that made everything make sense. And so now I'm like, oh, wow, I feel like completely different about this space and less resistance about this space. Because when I first heard of <laughs> or was on the Internet, I was like, this is the thing. This is like the best thing ever, apart from like chocolate. <laughs> right. So if we are a saver type and we're a bit tentative about moving forward in an area, you can do what I did and you can just educate yourself in an area to get your brain more comfortable with it. So I originally was quite resistant around that particular area, like NFTs and the metaverse. And I have a friend who's really into it. So I said to my friend, look, I'm kind of resisting this area. So I want you to talk to me about this area every time we meet, like intensively, tell me everything you know. And I essentially would just download my friend's information, everything she was learning and doing at her work in NFTs into my brain to get my brain more comfortable with this area. And that's how our brains work. It worked and I can keep doing this in any area. We can keep doing this in any area of our life. So what we would wanna do is if we're a saver and we're a bit nervous about investing or putting our money in certain places, we might want to just educate ourselves first before making any big decisions. And then make sure that we are educating ourselves in areas that we are in, are wanting to be in, think we should be in, and make sure that we can make our own decisions based on our own choices that we know we are making because we are comfortable making them, not because they're emotional decisions like fear-based or FOMO-based. We wanna make our own decisions for ourselves based on our true feelings about something. Like maybe we're just not into that area and we're like we don't really care and we only want to have some like really safe type of investment in that slither and just do that like it, it's really up to us so that's what when i did this tatler interview i talked about in nfts how we just want to be comfortable with whatever investments we make not just dive in because everyone else is diving in this is not advice this is all just my own personal opinion but just my opinion is that having confidence in our money is just about knowing our money personality and then sticking to what feels right for us and making sure that we recognize our emotions and clear whatever is just fear or um, not like lacking education based and so that we can be left with our actual decisions and our actual choices that are based in our interests our inclinations and our money personality, not based in fear, FOMO, or any of that other garbage. So if you're a saver type, you want to educate yourself, follow Instagrams that talk about this stuff, follow blogs, follow whoever, join groups. And if we are savers who are hoarding money and not spending it, we need to practice spending our spending muscle. So we have to use it. So we can use it in ways that really bring us beneficial life experiences and 
make memories and are the easiest way possible. So I mentioned that my parents, my parents, my sister and my mom went to a resort that was like a luxury resort that was all expenses paid and you just pay one fee and then you just go in and don't have to pay for anything else the whole time. That type of situation can suit a spender type, a, a saver type, because then you can spend that money one time on what the experience is and then relax and enjoy the experience knowing that that money is buying that experience instead of having to worry about every single bill or every single payment of that resort, how much is it, how much is the coconut juice, how much is this or that. So doing things that can help us practice spending if we're a very like hoardy type saver that can help us feel more comfortable about spending in small ways that are really valuable for our life experiences, that's a great way to practice doing that in the easiest way possible. That's always what we want to aim for. Whatever feels most comfortable and easy for us to move forward. It will be a little discomfort, but we want only a little discomfort and then a little again and again and again while we move forward. And that's always going to happen. That's just how life works. That's how change works. There'll always be a little discomfort from change, totally worth it, right? It's just totally worth it. So to summarize, spender types, we want to expense track and we want to make sure that we have stability built into our money lives where we can, recognizing that we're a spender type. And then with the saver type, we want, um, the saver type, yeah, we want to expose ourselves to areas that we might be curious about in terms of, you know, investing, saving, whatever it might be, but just expose ourselves with education so the brain gets more comfortable and familiar with those areas and also allow ourselves to spend in ways that are going to help us feel comfortable and value the spending in that experience in the easiest way possible that will be the most comfortable for us to go through as an experience and in that way practice spending on valuable life experiences. That's my video for today. Thank you so much for watching, liking, or sharing. If you want to try our free samplers to get a bit more insight and more tips like this into your money mind and into your money life, check out our website, www.moneymind.global or our Instagram at moneymind.global and see the free samplers that you can try to gain some insight, see if it's helpful for you, and possibly try the full pillars afterwards if you think you want a bit more of a deep dive to clean up your money foundations. Thanks for joining.